Hello everyone. I saw the movie The Hobbit, and I know it's kind of late to the party of talking about it, but I figured I'd show off that I got the, you know, books. Um, you know, I got the Lord of the Rings trilogy and The Hobbit, like for all four, in one, you know, in one little box set. I have not read the book yet, but I'm planning on doing it eventually. Exactly when I'm going to talk about it, I don't know. I don't really have any sort of date planned. I have a bunch of other books that I've got that I'm currently in the middle of. And some more that I have planned out. But um, anyway, um, today I'd like to talk about like um, the animated version compared to the new Peter Jackson and in my opinion, I think the 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 new The Hobbit movie kicks the crap out of the animated version completely. I mean, <clears throat> think, why? Because um, yeah, I know it's gonna be like, oh, that movie's you know the animated Hobbit's a classic and stuff like that. But um, I disagree, and really, I don't think the animated version was really that good. I mean, it was okay, but um, it it really isn't all that much to write home. Of. Like, it, it was just okay. So, I mean, don't. I mean, I liked it, but I mean, I mean, I liked it. The songs were good. The you know the whole story was kind of was pretty cool, but uh, it really like um okay. Let's just start off um. You know, in the animated version, you know, Gandalf and the dwarves come up and we hear, get this giant name drop of, like, all of them are introduced in one sitting. And the thing is, like, there, there's really nothing about these dwarves that are even remotely interesting. Like, you know, the, the one-note characters of uh, the seven dwarves in Snow White are, like, multi-dimensional characters compared to these guys like there, there's really only like one note between all the, all of the dwarves and um you know they're basically just greedy douchebags that want gold and um like the, the second i heard that there was going to be a peter jackson remake i knew like instantly they were going to make these dwarves better than those guys were you know, they're going to make him more sympathetic, likable, and they're going to definitely give him more personality. And, um, like, a relatively minor thing that I thought was much better is, um, you know, in the in the remit, in the Peter Jackson version, they introduce the dwarves, like, one at a time. They come in, like, hey, I'm Borin, I'm merely and Keely, and so forth. And, you know, kind because if you're like me, you kind of suck at remembering names. But, um, so, like, when you, when they just name dropped the whole lot of them in the animated version. I pretty much forgot all, all of them, you know, in, like, ten minutes later. But in the animated, but in the Peter Jacksons, um, you know, it's just introducing like one at a time. It gets to like, oh, hey, this is this guy. This is this guy. You know, I thought that was all cool. And then in the end, they throw on like five or six dwarves, just you know, you know, just piling through the door. But anyway, um, is um, like the dwarves have much more personality in the animated version. They they all almost looked alike. They all blended together. The only one that was even kind of memorable was Thorin because they say his name more times and you know he has the title King Under the Mountain. But um, anyway you know they, they all have their own little personalities. They dress different ways. You know <clears throat> and it was all cool and then there's the um, and you get to some little bits of their backstory, you know, like how they all have different, you know, jobs. And, um, and one thing that I especially like is, um, is like, 
that's one thing that just bugged me in the animated was the reason for recruiting Bilbo is because they were in a group of 13. That's an unlucky number. We need another guy. And because that 14 is less unlucky, you know. And this one, you know, there's a reason why Gandalf picks Bilbo specifically. You know, it's because, like, he remembers him from way back. He remembers Bilbo as, like, you know, younger days, being curious and so forth. And I especially like the speech he gave, he gives them, you know, to convince him about inventing the game, about how his great uncle or whatever invented the game of golf. I thought that was really cute, or how golf was invented. Y you'll see. And, um, and, um, <clears throat> and, uh, and it's not, and before it was like, um, like, oh, what's this? You want me to come? Like, oh, I don't want to go, but fine, I'll go. You know, in this one, it kind of takes him a while before he finally agrees to go on the adventure with the, you know, with the dwarves. <clears throat> then there's, um, let's see, um, there's, um, there's, um, the uh, first combat like when they were the, the trolls and like I've heard people complain like you know like oh it's kind of padded and stuff and you know too many action sequences but you know I disagree like I like that you know let me try them like a complaint that I heard about was that the movie was too long and I don't really get this complaint I mean um how can a movie be really too long like Let's see, um, too short, okay, too long, I mean, I don't get, like, as long as there's stuff happening, then I don't really, there's, uh, like, a good, there's, like, sometimes where the combat feels a little long, and, um, there's one particularly pointless sequence that comes in, like, a little later on, where they find, uh, giants fighting each other and you know it's just out of nowhere and you know just what they're walking on the cliffs and boom giants are fighting and they're beating the crap out of each other and so forth and um and you know it's just out of nowhere it doesn't make any sense and they never mention it again you know like what was even the point of that they couldn't have just said, uh, oh, it's, like, you could say it's because they would needed to get some rest, get into a cave. But, you know, they could have just had a storm happen and then that put them in the cave. And I don't know if this is in, um, in the books, in the book, but, um, one thing that I especially like was there's the so much more story. There's the... You know, you had the Pale Orc, which I don't... He looked com computer animated. I don't know why he needed to be CGI'd in. They could have had a regular dude. I don't know if he was... But he looked CG, obviously. He looked completely CG. And um, there's uh, the Necromancer. And um, one thing that I thought was cool was uh, Radagask the Brown. And I was like, that's kind of cool where showing extra wizards and um he's like having riding around on a sleigh being pulled by rabbits and he encounters a necromancer and he's like warns Gandalf and like there's this new evil that's approaching a necromancer he's destroying the green wood and now it's become people are calling it Mirkwood and um what I especially like is um when they make it to Rivendell, Gandalf tells uh, Elrond and Saruman and Galadriel about this. <clears throat> and um, Gandalf actually, he says, uh, you know, we cannot see, I don't think that uh, Radagask is entirely trustworthy. He's been dipping, he's been eating, consuming the mushrooms and his teeth have grown brown. And I thought that was kind of funny. You know, he's basically, literally saying, like, um, 
you know, he, he, Radagast has been dipping into the mushrooms. And the thing is, while I'm while I'm watching him say this, and he's like, his teeth have become brown. I'm just watching him. I think like, dude, your teeth are brown too. Seriously, his teeth are are really brown, are just as brown. And um, I just kind of chuckled at that. And then there's um, the um, and of course and there's um, one thing that one particular character that I'm always going to remember would be the Goblin King. There's um, mainly because of his extremely crazy chin. Like you, you've seen the movie, you're no, you're going to know what I'm talking about. He has this giant flab of like fat and skin hanging from his chin, you know, and, um, and I like, if you're like me, this is the, like, you're not going to be able to look away from this guy's chin, it's like hanging on, almost like a, almost thought it was like a beard, if it was like, wait a minute, what is that? Like, oh my god, that's skin and, and fat and stuff hanging off of his face, like, oh, but I couldn't look away, but you can't look away, it's almost like hypnotic or something, you know, like, dude, like, the, the second you see this guy, you're like, ugh, you're gonna automatically zero in on this guy's chin, <laughs> but, um, yeah, anyway, um, <clears throat> over, Anyway, I'm like, um, you know, so overall, you know, like, there's more plot, more story with the, the Thorin and his rivalry with the Pale Orc, you know, dealing with, there's, uh, there's this thing with the Necromancer, the extra character, like, putting in Radagast the Brown and so forth. I, I don't know if this stuff is in the book, but... I like it. I like it all of this stuff. It, and I can see how they're going to be. Is I can definitely see this being put into the how they made all this into the a trilogy. You know, with the add addition of all this extra stuff, of all, all these extra characters and plot points and so forth. And although we never actually see the smog. I certainly look forward to seeing him in the next movie, hopefully. Yeah, I think we're going to see him in the next movie. And, um, you know, um, <clears throat> one thing that I noticed is, like, um, people have been asking me is um, about the first m movie, about the first Lord of the Ring, about the trilogy. It's like, why don't they use the eagles? You know, they use them in here. And I guess you could ask, like, why they don't have them fly him all the way to the Lonely Mountain, but, um, although considering the fact that the area around the Lonely Mountain is kind of already had this whole legend about it being, like, uh, <clears throat> you know, like, uninhabitable and, like, the dragon will get you, so, of course, the eagles are going to be, like, afraid of the giant dragon and they're not going to be willing to fly all the way to the mountain, so they're just going to, like, help him get close, but they're not going to go there because they don't want to screw around. With, they don't want smog to, you know, gobble him up and kill him and so forth. Which is kind of my way of explaining why they don't take him all the way to the Lonely Mountain. They just take him part of the way. And as for the Lord of the Rings trilogy, um, well... They're supposed to be trying to be stealthy. They don't want to be found, you know. You know, we see in the first movie that Saruman can summon storms and stuff, and that we see these um, that ring. Right, it's uh, traveling around on the giant dragon-like things called fell beasts, and you know, I don't know about you, but I. If I saw a ring wraith and a and an eagle, you know the the fell beast, you know with the ring wraith on top, 
versus an eagle with the little hobbit. I'm going to be betting on the ring wraith and the fell beast. Especially since he is like a mounted, you know, saddle. And he won't really need to beat the eagle. He'll just need to, you know, knock the hobbit off and have him like fall to his death and they could just collect the ring, the ring at their leisure. <clears throat> but, um... Anyway, that's kind of my opinion overall. You know, I felt the Peter Jackson movie was way better than the than the Hobbit movie, even though oh, and um, even though like like I like the songs, and I especially enjoy that they ha they have a couple of songs from the animated movie in here. Though sadly, they, he didn't incorporate my two favorite songs, Down in the Valley and Greatest Adventure, but, um, you know, still really liked it. I thought it was much better. But then again, in a trilogy, they have more time to explain, you know, character motivations and stuff like that. And, you know, actually get into the characters of the dwarves and Bilbo and so forth much more. So, of course, it would be better than the animated version. And I'm betting I'm probably going to get a bunch of flack for saying that. the I don't think the animated version was really that good, you know. <clears throat> I mean, I, it was okay, but, you know, that's just, that's just me. But anyway, um... Like the, uh, like, love the movie... Definitely suggest going out and see it. Not didn't watch it in 3D. Don't really see any reason why, but yeah. Anyway, um, till next time. See you later and have a nice day.